The Book of True Life Teachings of the Divine Master Volume 12 Spiritual Teaching 348 Love Each Other 1. People I come to give you page after page of the book of my teachings so that you can take them printed in your heart. These lessons will be tomorrow for you an invaluable treasure that will help you perform your mission on earth and carve an award for your spirit. Through your struggle, this teaching will remain in the heart of humanity and you will sing a song of triumph when you arrive in the promised land. 2. I grant you that through your preparation you take from my arcanum what you need to give to your brothers because my chosen ones will come from different ways to become my disciples, workers, soldiers to defend my work. 3. All creation is subject to my law and everything in its harmony worships me. Raise your gaze to the sky and you will see the luminous stars that my wisdom has created. See in them an example of obedience and harmony. Inspire yourselves in that greatness, in that perfection, so that you meditate and let my Father's voice speak through your consciousness. Trees bear their fruits that are always pleasant to your palate. Throughout, I manifest myself and I speak to you so that you may meditate and be obedient to the law that I have given you. 4. You have worshipped me in the stars and in objects made by the hand of man. Look for me now within yourselves. Blessed is he who penetrates into inner silence, because he will feel my presence and will achieve peace of mind. 5. You have received my word through humble brains that have not been cultivated by the science of men, but I have prepared you to be the pedestal where my universal ray rests. 6. When you listen to my word, you still want the Father to become visible before your material eyes, and I tell you, prepare your heart, and there you will feel me, because not only do I come to console you in this time of pain, but to bring you the teaching that I had promised you since I was with you in the Messiah, in the Second Era. 7. My examples, my passion, are written in your spirit. There is the book that I have written in three eras. There is the word of my invoice, the testimonies, the facts. You can find everything if you learn to penetrate your spirit. 8. In this era, I speak to you from the top of the mountain where I wait for you. I come to give life to your spirit so that you rise to me. Feel my love and take my peace. Look for those who have been lost, the same in this world as in the spiritual valley. Blessed are you who have told me, Lord, we will follow your trail, become the soldiers strong to defend this cause. 9. Again, I show you the way where you will find the truth. I come to teach you so that you can give testimony of me to humanity, so that you prepare with your example the coming generations, and they carry my love and feel my peace. Then you will have become the disciples who imitate my apostles of the second era. I will send some of you to different regions and nations to show the way to those who have been confused. But you will get up full of humility, being a clean example among the multitudes that I will entrust to you. You will be like torches in which is the light of the Holy Spirit. 10. 
I am preparing my chosen ones with my word without contemplating their faults. I come to heal their spirits because I am the doctor's doctor. I lift them up and tell them, follow this path of truth that I present to you and you will soon come to me. 11. You are Israel, from whom I have called 144,000 who carry my divine seal, so that through you I may reach the salvation of mankind. 12. Men, women, and children of different nations will seek me, and you, a chosen people, are the mediate. You are those donated by the Master, so that in your path the arid and desert lands become lands fertile. Parable 13. In a large area of land there were a small number of inhabitants. They knew the time would come when they would come to dwell in those lands, walkers from the four areas of the planet of different races and colors. A humble young man taught them with words of truth, peace, light, and love. An old man sought and called for the crowds that would have to arrive in that region. He guided them, prepared them, and spoke to them about those privileged lands. The time came when the crowds came little by little. And then the young man said to the old man, What are you introducing me to? And the old man replied, Here you have these crowds that I have prepared, and that I have led here, so that they become your disciples. Then the young man said to him, Blessed are you. Keep looking in different roads and paths for the lost sheep. As a luminous beacon, illuminate the four areas of the earth, Bring on your shoulders the lost sheep. 14. That old man, full of submission and obedience, went on his way to gather the great crowds. Then the young man went to the inhabitants of those lands and said, I have come with my love to give you my teaching, because you will be the mediators through whom the light of the Holy Spirit will illuminate the great crowds to come. Behold, I have prepared your table with the bread of eternal life, and with this same bread you will feed humanity. 15. This is how I come to speak to you, my children. Study the meaning of my teachings, and understand who is the youth and who the old man. I am the one who come to teach you, and prepare you for the ideological struggle that is coming. The old man is Elijah, the good shepherd who gathers the sheep of my fold. 16. People who have prayed for peace to be restored and pain to be alleviated, you will hear with joy the testimony of the voice of your brothers, and you will see the value of prayer. 17. Today I let you hear my advice and warnings, because tomorrow you will need them. I ask you to be united so that you be strong, and there is not a single vulnerable point in you. Just as a father who sees his end near calls his children to accompany him at the last moment to give them his last recommendations, so I speak to you, and I ask you, Love each other and understand each other. Strengthen yourselves in virtue to form a single spirit that watches over and prays for the world. 18. I leave you a great position, but I give you peace and strength. You yourselves will not be able to judge your actions, but I, the judge, I will weigh your works. I will receive your fruits, and in the end, I will show you the results of all your efforts and effects. 19. Blessed are you humble, 
those who recognize that a higher will governs your destiny. You attribute it to my divinity and you grant me the right to dispose of your life because you know that I always give you proof of my love to you. 20. You are the spiritualist people on whom I have set my gaze so that you awaken the world so that it receives the light of my Holy Spirit. 21. Humanity seeks me through religions, among which are those that in their practices teach spirituality. 22. I have entrusted my work to you, and I have enlightened you, so that you may be tireless, cultivating my word in the heart of humanity, so that you may rise up with the banner of the law, and like a good soldier, you defend, with love, the cause that I have trusted. 23. My spirit is recreated with the harvest of good workers, but it also suffers when I contemplate that the workers have slept. He has not been able to cultivate the seed that I have entrusted to him. 24. When you are draining the cup of pain, I listen to you in silence, and spiritually I console you. 25. Great is the number of those who have been born at this time to the life of grace within my work. And you, what you have been since the first, you must prepare yourself so that tomorrow, when you no longer hear my word through a speaker, do not feel your brothers orphans or disoriented. 26. The book of my teaching is made up of the lessons that in this time I have dictated to you through human understanding. With this book that will come to be recognized by humanity as the Third Testament, you will defend my divine cause. Humanity only recognizes the law of the First Era, what is written in the First and Second Testaments but the third will come to unify and correct what men have misunderstood for lack of preparation and understanding. Humanity will have to study my message so that penetrating to the bottom of each word find a single ideal, a single truth, the same light that will guide you towards spirituality. 27. Prepare yourselves, beloved people, so that you may be able to watch over this treasure that I have entrusted to you. 28. Blessed are those who know how to understand me in each manifestation through human understanding. Blessed are the families in which, from the first to the last of their members, are in my bosom. Spiritualists work. It will be the obedient family, the blessed seed, that I will show humanity as an example. 29. I have spoken to you of the life of the Spirit, of what you call the hereafter, and of my divine greatness. And I tell you, that in all of these lessons there is no mystery, because whoever is clean will have the privilege of seeing and understanding life of the hereafter that spiritual world that is illuminated with the light of the Holy Spirit and its inhabitants who together form a bond of love. You will see the top of that mountain of which the seers tell you. This is where the Father waits for all humanity. 30. My spiritual world works tirelessly and inspires and encourages you to penetrate spirituality. It helps you so that in your fulfillment you obtain more advance. 31. You have long heard in my manifestations that the day will come when you have to be an imitation of your master to give the teaching to your brothers who do not know spirituality. The moment will arrive in which the light of the Holy Spirit will fully cover and illuminate you so that you can make my work, 
my word given at this time, the light that will guide each spirit towards the divine mission. 32. Live in accordance with what I have entrusted to you for your human life. Feed yourselves with the fruit of the tree of life. See that under its branches you will find rest and shelter. Cultivate it yourselves so that you can see that its branches and fruits multiply. 33. The fountain will pour out its crystalline waters to quench the thirst of the pilgrims, of those who are crossing the desert, so that they feel strengthened. 34. The wolf in sheep's clothing will stalk you on the roads, but you must watch and pray, and be careful not to fall into abysses. For instance, you will feel that the rays of the inclement sun will make themselves felt in your being, but I will make my spiritual world be like a protective mantle on your path. You will help me to form within this humanity a new world. 35. You are the disciples who are ready to fight tomorrow. You will be strong and you will know how to deliver how much I have entrusted in your hands for humanity. 36. I don't want you to break the law. Some of you have been surprised by darkness, and this has happened to you because you have not wanted to hear my voice as a shepherd who calls you with so much love. 37. You have become familiar with my word, and you doubt that the Master will stop speaking to you through human understanding. And truly I say to you, why do you interfere in my high judgments? I have marked the time for you, and it is not my will for you to tell me, Master, contemplate that the vicissitudes and wars fill the world with anxiety. It is a time of trial for humanity, and are you going from among us? Then your consciousness will respond to you and will make you recognize the vast time that I entrusted you with my word. More like a father and as a master, after 1950, as today, I will be listening to all your requests through your prayer. After my departure, all of you will be equal to the fulfillment of my mandates. You will develop your gifts and through your conscience, I will speak to you so that you regenerate and I will make you recognize with the light of my Holy Spirit the true way so that you do not fall into the abyss. 38. When the great multitudes come to you in search of comfort and my charity for their spirits, I will enlighten and inspire you to receive my word through you. I have entrusted you with my grace so that you may be recognized as the children of light. 39. I have purified you, beloved people, because at this time I have entrusted great charges to your spirit so that you do merits, so that you testify the truth of my doctrine, doing good to humanity, so that in the hereafter you take my peace and do not get lost in the darkness again. I want that when your spirit arrives before me, you say to me, Master, I did your will in my way, and here I am again, so that you entrust to my spirit orders and mandates in accordance with your divine mercy. 40. If you spiritualize, your children will obey you, and the crowds will respect you, because they will contemplate that you are the evolved spirits that carry the light of my Holy Spirit. And then, those who have parked, contemplating your example, they will return to the path. They will shake your right hand and they will follow your steps. When they come to you, those who hunger for my truth, you will give them my words so that they may become meek lambs. 
41. At this time, evil will be bound in sheaves and thrown into the fire. I will do all these works, and you, Israel, will speak to the world of the time in which he is living, and the why of all the events. I have entrusted you with my truth, because great is my love to you. You are the depositories of the great revelations and prophecies. 42. Through you the law will be made known again to the new generations. That is why I have told you that you must be in preparation, because you have come to prepare the way so that tomorrow the new generations not be idolaters, nor do false prophets arise from among them that deceive mankind. 43. All this you will have to reveal to the world, Israel. In this time when various ideologies have arisen, it will rise sect against sect, religions will fight each other, and you too will be ignored. But being the children of light and of peace, you will tell them. The truth exists in the content of the Third Testament. There is the testimony of the presence and the coming of the Lord at this time. You will show humanity this book and bear witness to its truth with your compliance with my law. 44. But if you sleep, Israel, how much pain will there be then? Because the nations will be touched with my justice. They will not know how to look for the true God and they will only be confused in the middle of their ideologies, and they will want to make you recognize their false gods to confuse you. 45. Live alert, my people, because I have greatly entrusted my word to you so that you are not ignorant, because you know how to feel my presence, and I have taught you to recognize the essence of my word. 46. After my departure, many will rise up, making you believe that I am still communicating because of their understanding. I will not manifest in those brains, nor will my spirit world, because it will not take the human brain after 1950 to communicate with you. Only spiritually can you communicate with my spiritual world of light. 47. Be obedient, children, so that you do not fall into an imposture, because there will be great events after my departure. But you will awaken those who sleep, and you will not fall back into idolatry. And the moment you rise in prayer, you will feel my strength, and you will receive the effluvium of my grace. So I will give you proof that you are not wrong. 48. My gaze will always be attentive to you. I will never abandon you. My spirit will be close to you, contemplating you in your fight and defending yourself from threats and dangers. Fulfill my law so that man does not get in your way with its laws. If you please your father, you will be pleased with the world and you will feel the brotherhood of all your kind. It is time for the world to recognize my light and not reject my envoys. 49. You carry the power to separate beings in darkness from your brothers, so that your fellow men do not snatch the thread of existence. 50. For a moment I will let the world do its will, but later my will only in the universe. Watch and pray before the pain that humanity hastens, because the years have passed and the time has surprised you. I have shown you the path through which you must travel, and I have given you all that you have of necessity, because I have watched over your spirit. To him, I have fed him with the bread of eternal life, and I have awakened him of his dream, so that he recognizes his mission and feels his responsibility within my work. 
51. Great has been materialism and misunderstanding, and for this reason, beloved disciples, you have parked yourself in routine without letting your spirit evolve. 52. At every moment I have made you recognize with a word of love what you have not practiced to make known to humanity the work that I have entrusted to you. And if you have not prepared yourself, how is humanity to achieve my peace by your conduit, my light and my love? It is you to whom I have entrusted the mission that you go to all ways to spread my teachings. I have revealed to you the greatness of which your spirit is the bearer. I have told you who, without having done merit, out of love and with my grace, I have chosen you and I have anointed you. I have taught you so that you be the apostles who show the world my teaching engraved in your heart. 53. Time has passed and you still have not made any merits. You have to extend your arm to lift them that have fallen. You must show the light of noon to your brothers who are in darkness so that they recognize that in all times I have manifested myself among you and in humanity. 54. In the first era, I freed you from the slavery of Pharaoh through Moses, whom I placed at the head of my people to guide him to the promised land, to the land of Canaan. 55. In the second era, the Messiah, the Divine Master gave you proofs of my essence, presence, and potency, but the man in his selfishness and materialism, he ignored me. 56. At this time, you are again the slaves, not of Pharaoh, but of temptation, because she has given you the riches, pleasures, and power to subdue you and many of you have fallen and strayed from the path of light because you have been weak. I have not set aside grace. You have retained it with your lack of compliance with my law. But the world in its incomprehension has not realized this and they are giving their brothers a work that they themselves have forged. 57. How serious is the error in which the former have fallen, and how serious is the error in which you too are falling, because you have not meditated that it is only one God who has spoken to you, and that therefore you have not received different teachings or different laws. 58. Only one God has always appeared before you. I have never abandoned you. I have always found myself close to your heart. The Messiah in the second era manifested my divine love and, as Master, gave you the example of obedience to the law, taught you to pray, and showed you the way. 59. In this third era, my divine will is fulfilled, because you have received my teaching, the bread of eternal life to your spirit. I have announced to you that after the year 1950, you will no longer listen to my word through human understanding, and only through the evolution of your spirit will you communicate with me from spirit to spirit. 60. I entrusted to you these last three years of my communication through the spokesman so that you would meditate and understand your responsibility, so that you could get out of your routine and let your spirit take steps forward, but many of you have lain asleep and find yourself lacking in understanding and elevation. Why, Israel, have you not dedicated yourselves to the study and analysis of the vast teachings that I have given you? The blind have not beheld even the light. You have not known how to heal the paralyzed so that they follow me and the crowds are confused and wonder if they will have found the true path. 61. 
Many of you have believed to be complying with my law, and you are in serious error, because only the bad example is showing to your brothers. You are the cause of men to be confused and continue to feed idolatry and search through the different human ideas to the true God. 62. You will remain, beloved people, at the end of my communication as an orphan, more as in the second era. After my departure, you will understand me. After no longer listen to my word, you will know that I have taught you a lot, but your awakening will be late. Therefore, people, with great pain in my heart as a father, I demand your lack of fulfillment and obedience. I do not want that tomorrow humanity will contemplate you as the people ungrateful to my divine grace, and many without having listened to me like you will believe in my message and will love me. 63. I have pointed out your errors so that you understand that you are not showing my work in the light of truth, so that you regenerate and manifest to the world what you have received from me. 64. You have believed Israel that because he is a loving father, he would not claim your faults, and that he would cover you with my mantle to make you known to the world as the true disciples, soldiers, and teachers of tomorrow. If so, Israel, I myself would deny you my love, because when the moment came, you would not know how to bear witness to my truth with your words and deeds, and then tomorrow's humanity would deny my manifestation, because perfection, it has never mixed with your imperfections. 65. I have told you that you are in the time of the struggle of love against hatred, of my light against darkness, of humility against pride, and tomorrow, when it is your awakening, you will feel in your heart infinite and deep sadness to understand the time you have wasted, and then you will recognize the mission of the spokespersons who knew to prepare to give you my truth. My peace be with you.